All right, so this next question is from Justin on FTO polymorphisms. He says, hi, Robin, Nikki, my wife and I both did our 23andMe years ago, but just recently ran it through Dr. Rhonda Patrick's genome analysis tool. We both have FTO polymorphisms that put us at highest, ri highest risk of obesity, specifically from saturated fat consumption, and it looks like high levels of saturated fat by itself even causes insulin dumps with this, par this particular polymorphism. I did not even realize this was possible. I thought this could only happen with refined carbs. This is something that varies population-wide, but since we know that we in particular have this polymorphism, I have some questions about how to tackle this to feed my family of four with foods that are right for us. Uh, currently, we're just doing a paleo diet and I've lost 40 pounds and I'm down to 198. I run about five miles a week. There isn't a particular goal weight or strength level, but for my height, 5'10", it seems appropriate to be closer to the 160 to 175 range. Since we're trying to do this as a family and I have young kids, I'm not trying to put anyone on a diet. Just make sure they're eating good foods when we're at home where we have the most control of what's around. The paleo template is working very well for us, but with this new information, I want to make sure we're optimizing our food choices. My question comes in with foods I thought were very healthy and now I feel like maybe healthy or benign for the general population, but likely should be avoided by my family. For example, coconut oil, MCT oil, pastured beef, pork, dark chocolate. So three questions. Should we be avoiding the above mentioned foods and shoot for higher levels of mono and polyunsaturated fats mixed with fish, chicken, turkey, and 93.7% beef. Um, what is a good target number of saturated fat in a day with this gene polymorphism for an adult to keep insulin levels healthy? And finally, since cutting those saturated fat levels down is going to cut a lot of calories, should we be increasing carbs, mono polyunsaturated fats, protein, or a mix to make up the difference? Thank you for your time. Holy smokes, that's a lot of stuff to unpack. Uh, so the first one, should we avoid, be avoiding the above mentioned foods? <sighs> It, you know, so one one thing that's that's important to take away with this stuff is although so like this FDO um, polymorphism definitely has some implications for like lipoproteins, um, the the potential that uh, saturated fats don't benefit uh, insulin sensitivity. All of the studies that have been done are still typically within the context of a mixed Western diet. Nobody is pumping folks with you know paleo type foods through this process so do we get the same gene expression under those circumstances and i, I think that that's a a valid question to, to ask although we do see some folks whether on the low carb side of paleo or straight into keto they have some squirrely stuff happen some elevated in, inflammatory markers um what I would do with this is actually get a baseline of what your lipoproteins and your lipoprotein insulin resistance score is. And we'll put a link to that in the show notes. You can get that ordered through Specialty Health, the uh, folks that we work with here in Reno. But if you are insulin resistant, well, let me back up with that. It doesn't really matter where you are, but within that insulin resistance score, uh, the lipoprotein insulin resistance score, in general, lower is better. In, in this regard. So, it, it, but if you're already 20, then like cutting it to 10 really isn't gonna be, be that big of a deal. But if you have an LPIR score of 80, then yeah, we wanna really look at stuff. But what I would do is get that as a baseline so that then any tinkering that you do, we actually can know that it's benefiting you or potentially not benefiting you. You've already lost a bunch of weight, which we know for a fact, regardless of everything else, that's improved your insulin sensitivity. It's decreased inflammatory markers. Like that's just a guarantee. But if we're gonna do additional tinkering, then I would strongly recommend getting that LPIR score as a baseline. And again, we'll we'll plug that into the show notes. That I, I don't remember we'll, we'll the URL the yeah, off we'll the, the top of my head. So, um, so I would use that as a baseline. And then all of these recommendations from there, uh, the good target for an amount of saturated fat for a day, I wouldn't even know where to go with that. Like, uh, uh, you know, I guess some of the, the even Cordain backed guidelines are somewhere between like eight to 12% of total calories. And if you're reading on the leaner side of the, the protein spectrum, more fish, more monounsaturated fats, that should be reasonably easy to get. And yeah, I mean, if, if you are cutting the, so the third question, if you cut the saturated fat levels, you probably will need to replace those calories to some degree. 
and you know just play with that again like maybe you add some more paleo type carbs maybe you add more monounsaturated fats i eat probably about 60 percent of my calories from almonds right now blue diamond smokehouse almonds no less because i i love the smoky saltiness but again um i would make the case that the the tinkering is less important than having a baseline so that we can assess what the tinkering does because at lpir score again you will know what your uh, LDL particle count is, which is critical in that, that kind of cardiovascular disease story, even though it's not straightforward and simple at all. Uh, it will tell you, tell us your insulin resistance score, and then based off of everything that you do, then we can assess that. And I think that this is one of the, the really dangerous things that happens where people say, go do this. And it's like, well, how are we going to assess whether or not that does anything for us, either good or bad? You know, I've always liked, how do you look? How do you feel? How do you perform? And then look at biomarkers of health and disease. And we've been recommending that since like 2007, you know, when we first started going on the road doing things. And over the course of time, our ability to do that under the hood look at uh, uh, specific biomarkers that give us some good feedback has really improved. So. You, you, the things that you ask there are great questions. I don't know which ones specifically to do. All of them are fair game. Increasing monos, increasing carbs, decreasing the saturated fat levels. Uh, the saturated fat in coconut oil will almost certainly provide a, a different um, stimulus on that FTO gene versus, say, like the 85% lean beef. Like, it, 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 and certainly different than butter and cream. So those are all things that you can tinker with. And once you have that baseline, then we can actually you know, do what, some what, good assessment. What effects are having. Yeah. yeah.